Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, if you haven't already seen it, I uh, recently had the opportunity to sit down with Susan Eisenhower, who is the granddaughter of President Dwight Eisenhower. And I've had a lot of people ask me, and I've begun doing research into doing a video on the living descendants of presidents and what they're doing today, who they are, and uh, which presidents even have living descendants. Uh, so that prompted me to want to take a look at my friend Mr. Beat's video on all the president's children. This is one many of you have requested for a while now. Uh, so we're going to dive into it today. If you haven't already subscribed to Mr. Beat, I encourage you to do that. He has a great deal of knowledge, uh, really cool presentation style, uh, and has a lot of great videos that I would encourage you to check out. I'll put a link in the description to the original content so you can check that out, but also check out all of his other videos as well. Let's go ahead and dive into this one. You know what? I'm Mr. Beat. <laughs> Joe Biden will soon be the 46th president in American history. Biden has had some major tragedies in his yeah. life. On December 18th, 1972, just weeks after he was elected to the U.S. Senate, his wife, Nelia, was Christmas shopping with their three kids, Naomi, Bo, and Hunter, when their vehicle was struck by a truck pulling out of an intersection. Both Nelia and Naomi, who was just one year old at the time, died in the accident. And Biden at the time was in his 30s. He was like right at the minimum age to be able to be elected. Uh, a U.S. Senator. And uh, you can imagine, I mean, at that point in your life, what that does to you and it causes you to question everything. And I think he actually really seriously considered not taking his Senate seat. And I totally get that. Um, and not to in any way make light of this horrible, horrible thing that he experienced, but that hardly makes him unique in terms of presidential history. And I'm sure that's where Matt's going with this. Bo and Hunter were injured but survived. However, on May 30th, 2015, Bo died at the relatively young age of 46 from brain cancer. Perhaps and had probably a really promising political career ahead of him. He was in the military, a veteran. I think he was Attorney General of Delaware, and who knows where he might have gone. Perhaps a parent's worst fear is to yeah. lose their own children. 100%. Joe Biden has had to bury two of his four children. But throughout American history, it has probably been more common than you think yeah. for American presidents to outlive their own children. In this video, let's look at every single son or daughter of every single American president. Some of the president's children were famous. The vast majority of them, however, were not. Heck, they don't even have Wikipedia pages, and we don't even know the names of all of them. Yeah. The average number of children for all the presidents is 4.1. Now, keep in mind that I am also going to mention some, quote, alleged children throughout this video. Before we jump in, this video is sponsored in part by the game Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a free military themed PvP I played strategy that one yet, game but set in recent like history to. with the objective of just, um, yeah, taking over the whole world. Hey, I've always wanted to do that. Anyway, you choose a country first and basically just build up your military, but in order to pull off world domination, a game round usually takes weeks to complete. It features a real-time tactical combat system using real weapons and allowing players to command a modern battlefield. You can declare war on your neighbors or forge alliances with North other Korea players. conquering Conflict the West. Of Nations is fully cross-platform, and I got a special gift for you. You. Click the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and a one month premium subscription absolutely free. That offer only lasts 30 days though, so act fast. Thanks to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. Here are all the president's children. George Washington. Yeah, um, he didn't have any biological children. The father of the country couldn't apparently father any children <laughs> due to possibly getting tuberculosis. Although him getting smallpox as a teenager quite possibly could have made him sterile. However, Washington did have two stepchildren after he married his wife, Martha. So there's there have been rumors that there was this uh, enslaved man named West Ford who supposedly bore resemblance to George Washington and people have alleged that he had like a one night kind of thing with West Ford's mother, but it's also possible it could have been another member of the Washington family. 
um, any other, you know, one of the other male members or something. But it seems very likely that had George Washington been able to father children, that he and Martha would have had some. Uh, he was her second husband. Uh, tragedy with both of those children. Who had them in a previous marriage? Their biological father, Daniel Park Custis, had died when they were both very young. Washington's stepson, John Park Custis, lived only to the age of 26, dying probably from dysentery shortly after the surrender of Charles Cornwallis and the American War of Independence. So he was known as Jack or Jackie, uh, and he accompanied his stepfather who really was a father to him and had raised him from a young age and uh, they were very close and he'd accompanied him on the Yorktown campaign and probably got dysentery because of being in the military camp and uh, uh, he is going to be the uh, I guess grandfather of um, or great grandfather of Mary Anna Custis Lee who is the wife of Robert E. Lee. Washington's stepdaughter, Martha Park Custis, died when she was a teenager. And she had, uh, she probably had epilepsy and had, uh, she had gone like, I think she was in her room or something and she was with another girl who had left the room and came back and found her in the middle of this really bad seizure and, and George Washington had done everything he could to try and help her and taken her to doctors all over the place and tried all these remedies to put a stop to these seizures, but one of those seizures ended up killing her. John Adams. John and his wife Abigail had six children. Two of them died very young. Susanna died as a toddler. Elizabeth died during birth. Two of their other children also lived relatively short lives. Charles died at the age of 30. There was also Abigail, nicknamed Nabby, who died from cancer when she was 48. There was a So Charles uh, probably drank himself to death. Um, you see, if you've seen the show John Adams, uh, very tumultuous relationship between John Adams and his son Charles. Nabby has uh, breast cancer, survives this horrible surgery, which again they portray in John Adams, uh, and then recovers for a while, but then ends up uh, having a recurrence of the disease also Thomas and finally John Quincy Adams who is the most famous son of John Adams due to a distinguished career in federal politics and he was also you know president Thomas Jefferson okay so nobody really knows how many children Jefferson actually had but it's probably 14 uh I mean possibly 15 I think okay so let's just run through his six children with his wife Martha first there was Martha nicknamed Patsy there was Mary and this is a super common thing back then to name daughters after their mother um, not as common now, but it does still happen. He nicknamed Polly, who died when she was 25. Jefferson had four other children with Martha that all died very young. Jane and Lucy Elizabeth II died as toddlers, and Lucy Elizabeth I and an unnamed son died as babies. Jefferson also had alleged children with Sally Hemings. Who was the half-sister of Jefferson's wife. They both had the same white father one of his slaves. Okay, so there's DNA evidence that basically proves it. After Martha died, Sally was pretty much Jefferson's secret lover, yet still as a slave. Some so the argument is going to be from people, well, DNA just proves that it was a male member of the Jefferson family who fathered those children, and that is absolutely true. But then you have to take in the secondary and circumstantial evidence, uh, which basically rules out all the other male members of Thomas Jefferson's family who could have been. And just r rationally thinking and, and using our reasonable minds, if this went to a court of law, he would be convicted of being the father. The evidence is there, the DNA evidence is there, the circumstantial evidence is there. The fact is he was the one who was with Sally more often by far than any of the other uh, male members of the Jefferson family. There's no reasonable conclusion that anyone else is the father of these children. Historians claim that Jefferson may have had sexual relations with Hemings when she was as young as 14. What the heck, Jefferson? Anyway, so with Sally, Jefferson had Tom, Harriet the First, Eddie, William Beverly, Thania, Harriet the Second, James Madison, yep, and Eston. Harriet the First, Eddie, and Thania all died very young. James Madison. 
Madison and his wife Dolly had no children together, and he was possibly also sterile. He had a stepson, though, John yeah. Payne Todd, who was Dolly's son from a previous marriage. And John Payne Todd was kind of a... not a great guy. Um, in fact, uh, I'll put... I have a link in the description to where you can listen to my podcast, and uh, I had not even really thought about this, but I've got an ongoing series on my podcast about the tragic lives of American presidents, and I go into a lot of detail about these families and about these children and about guys like John Payne Todd, um, and I'm currently working on the next episode of that. I've worked through like 10 or 12 of the presidents so far and kind of going over their family situations. James Monroe. Monroe had three kids with his wife Elizabeth, Eliza, James, who died as a toddler, and Maria. Maria was the first kid of a president to get married in the White House in 1820. Yeah, she married her cousin. Pretty common back then. Yeah, it was. John Quincy Adams, the first son of a president to become a president. Adams had five children with his wife, Louisa. George Washington. And Louisa, by the way, uh, foreign born. Uh, up until, I believe, up until Melania Trump, she was the only first lady who was not uh, a Native American citizen. She was from the British Empire. Ten, uh, George Washington Adams, that is. John Adams, uh, John Adams II, that is. Charles and Louisa Catherine and an unnamed son who both died shortly after birth. Charles had a distinguished yeah. political career as a U.S. representative and U.S. envoy to the United Kingdom and the Abraham Lincoln administration. Andrew Jackson. Jackson and his wife Rachel had no children together. Jackson was also possibly sterile. Possibly, but there's also some circumstantial evidence that he may have had at least, I think like, well, I don't know for sure, but um, he, he adopted several children. They did adopt three kids, though. There was Andrew Jackson Jr., who was Rachel's brother's son. Yeah. Today, Jackson has a horrible reputation among Native Americans for signing the Indian Removal Act, what? among other things. However, Jackson adopted two Native American boys. Yeah. There was Theodore and Lincoya, who both apparently died young. Andrew and Rachel had saved Lincoya's life when he was a baby, as his parents had died and no one wanted to take care of him. Jack and this is just a great reminder that people's lives are complicated. And when we start painting people in black and white terms, we miss a lot of the nuance, right? You can't get past the fact that Andrew Jackson has an awful track record when it comes to dealing with Native Americans. But then you look and say, well, he raised two of them. So it's complicated, right? I mean, both things can be true. He can have personally cared about these two boys that he raised, but also have been terrible toward other Native Americans. It's true that a slave owner could be very kind to his slaves, but at the same time, he was owning people and denying them their freedom. So all of those things can be true at the same time. Jackson probably had a soft spot for orphans since he was an orphan himself. Yep. Martin Van Buren. Van Buren had six children with his wife, Hannah, who died at 35, 18 years before Van Buren became president, actually. The six were Abraham, John, Martin, Van Buren Jr., Winfield, Smith, and an unnamed daughter. The unnamed daughter and Winfield both died as babies. William Henry Harrison. Harrison and his wife Anna had 10 children. Elizabeth, nicknamed Betsy, John, Lucy, William Henry Harrison Jr., John Scott, Benjamin, Mary, Carter, Anna, and James. So you can see Benjamin's a, a name that runs in the family, right? Because uh, William Henry Harrison's father had signed the Declaration of Independence, Benjamin. I think his name was Benjamin Harrison V. And John Scott Harrison's a congressman, and his son will be President Benjamin Harrison. All of them except for James reached adulthood. John Scott grew up to become a U.S. representative and had 13 kids of his own. One of those kids, future President Benjamin Harrison. Yep, John Scott Harrison is the only person in American history to have both a father and a son who were presidents. Pretty epic. William Henry Harrison also allegedly had a daughter named Dilcia with one of his slaves, John Tyler. John Tyler had more children than any other yep. president in American history. He had 16 children in total. Eight with his wife, Letitia. Seven with his second wife, Julia. Wait, 
I'm pretty good at arithmetic, and that's just 15. Well, Tyler also allegedly had a son with one of his slaves, John William Dungey. All eight of his kids with Letitia, except for Anne, reached adulthood. His other children with her were Mary, Robert, John Tyler Jr., Letitia, nicknamed Letty, Elizabeth, Alice, and Tazewell. All seven of Tyler's kids with Julia survived to adulthood. So Julia is his second wife, Julia Gardner is her um, maiden name and she's much much younger than John which is what I'm sure is going to set up what I, I expect he'll mention here that Tyler was in his 60s still having children and then one of his sons was in his 60s still having children which is how we get to this day a president born in 1790 having as of 2023 still one living grandson. There was David, John Alexander, Julia, Lachlan, Lyon, Robert, and Margaret Pearl. David was later a U.S. representative. And the reason that name Lyon, L-Y-O-N, Gardner, Tyler, is prominent is because Lyon Gardner, who is buried on Long Island, he's one of my wife's ancestors, so I know a lot about him. We've been to his grave. Um, Lyon Gardner was like the progenitor of the family in America, and Lyon Gardner's son, David Gardner, was the first white child born in the state of Connecticut. Uh, and if you look at the end of Long Island, um, there's an island at the end on the east end. It's Gardner's Island, and that was the family, and it's, I believe to this day, still owned privately by the family. So here's something crazy. There's John Harrison. Tyler's son, Lion, had a son named Harrison, who is still alive today. Holy crap, wowza. James Polk. Polk was also sterile, likely due to an operation where he had urinary stones removed when he was a teenager. Polk and his wife Sarah were the only presidential couple to never have children while together, biologically, adopted, or from yep. a previous marriage. And that surgery, I talked about that in my podcast, was fascinating because it was a really kind of a pioneering thing. People weren't doing that kind of surgery at that time. Uh, and the surgeon who did that surgery on James Polk would go on to pioneer a number of early abdominal surgeries that became standard practice in years later. Zachary Taylor. Taylor had six children with his wife, Margaret. They had to bury three of their children, all three dying from malaria. Octavia and Margaret died from malaria when they were babies, and Sarah died from it when she was 21, married three Jefferson months Davis. after marrying Jefferson Davis. And yeah, she was married to Jefferson Davis. His second wife then is Verena Howe. Um, and his other son, Richard, became a lieutenant general in the Confederate Army. Yeah, the Jefferson Davis, who was the only president of the Confederate States of America. Anyway, Taylor's other three kids were Anne, Mary, and Richard. Millard Fillmore. Fillmore had Alec two Baldwin. children with his wife, Abigail. Millard Powers and... How much does Millard Powers Fillmore look like his father? <laughs> I mean, that is uncanny, the resemblance between them. That happens sometimes. And sometimes it skips a generation and a, a grandchild will look more like the grandparents. Mary. Mary, who served as acting first lady due to Abigail's poor health, was brilliant. She could speak at least five languages and played many instruments. Good for her, her sudden death from cholera at the young age of 22 mm. Particularly devastated Fillmore. Fillmore had no kids with his second wife, Caroline. Franklin Pierce. The tragic life of a the tragic life of a doe face, yeah. indeed. All three of his children, with his wife Jane, did not live to see their dad become president. Franklin Pierce Jr. died as a baby. Frank Robert died when he was four from typhus. And most tragically of all, Benjamin, a.k.a. Benny, died in a horrible train accident just weeks before Pierce was to be inaugurated. Pierce and Jane nearly died from the accident as well and witnessed firsthand as a train car smashed Benny, nearly decapitating him. Yeah, absolutely horrible. Uh, and Franklin Pierce's wife believed that it was retribution for him becoming president, that she thought that was something he had no business doing and, and that it was wrong for them to pursue that. And she thought it was punishment uh, for them losing their child. But I mean, just losing a child in general would, would be just crippling to anyone. But to have them lose him the way they did, witnessing it, this horrible death, um, it's no wonder Pierce became an, uh, just a raging alcoholic uh, and just drank himself 
silly during his presidency. James Buchanan. Buchanan never married and never had biological children, although he did adopt two nieces, Mary and Harriet. Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln had four children with his wife, Mary, all boys. Three of them died young. Yep. Eddie when he was three, Willie when he was 11. That was when Lincoln was actually in the White House, by the way. And Tad when he was 18. So yeah, if you're Mary Todd Lincoln, um, she had a couple of brothers who died during the Civil War fighting for the Confederacy. Uh, she has her husband murdered. She has three of her children die young. Uh, and she was predisposed to mental illness already. And so it's no wonder that she ended up in an insane asylum later in life. And Lincoln's one of those presidents who has no living descendants today. Um, Robert had, I believe, a grandchild that was alive until the mid 1980s. And there are speculation about a possible child of his, but most likely did not happen. That was when Lincoln was actually in the White House, by the way, and Tad when he was 18. When Tad was younger, he famously was known as the crazy impulsive kid running around the White House. He reportedly interrupted important meetings, collected animals, and set them loose around the house, and charged visitors to see his dad. Yep. Smart kid. Lincoln and Mary's other boy, Robert, lived a long life and notably was the U.S. Secretary of War in the James Garfield administration and later U.S. Minister to the United Kingdom in the Benjamin Harrison administration. And something I always point out about him, he had this real irrational, well I wouldn't say it's irrational, he had this real fear of being around presidents later in life because he was in Washington when his father was assassinated. He was at the train station with Garfield when he was shot. He was in Buffalo like a building or two over from where McKinley was shot when that happened in 1901 and uh, avoided presidential events after that, ends up coming to Washington for the dedication of the Lincoln Memorial with President Warren Harding, who then very soon after dies in office. Andrew Johnson. Johnson and his wife, Eliza, had five children, Martha, Charles, Mary, Robert, and Andrew Johnson Jr., a.k.a. Frank, Ulysses Grant. Grant and his wife, Julia, had four children, Frederick, Ulysses Grant Jr., nicknamed Buck, Ellen, nicknamed Nellie, and Jesse. Frederick ended up being a military governor of a province in the Philippines. And another guy who looked just like his dad. Look at the resemblance there with Fred. After the United States occupied it in 1899. And I believe he's buried at West Point. I think I remember visiting Frederick Dent Grant's grave there. He's real close to all of the Civil War veterans that are kind of all buried nearby. By each other. Oh, and before that, he was U.S. Minister to Austria-Hungary and the Benjamin Harrison administration. Rutherford Hayes. Hayes and his wife Lucy had eight children. Sardis Burchard, James, Rutherford Platt, Joseph, George, Fanny, Scott, and Manning. Manning died as a baby, and Joseph and George died as toddlers. James Garfield. Garfield and his wife Lucretia had seven children, five who lived to adulthood. Eliza died when she was three, and Edward died when he was just one. There was also Harry, who was a president of a college, James Rudolph, who was a U.S. Secretary of the Interior in the Theodore Roosevelt administration. You notice how, how common it is for children of presidents to go on and serve in the administration of later presidents. Uh, and, and that's true in life in general, right? Look at how many actors are the children of famous actors. You know, it's not an uncommon thing for people to want to pursue what their parents pursued, uh, to go into a similar field. And then others who just want to get as far away from doing anything like that as possible. Mary, Irvin, and Abram, who was an accomplished architect. Chester Arthur. Arthur and his wife, Nell, had three children. William, who died when he was just two. Chester Arthur II. And Ellen, also nicknamed Nell like her mother. Grover Cleveland. Cleveland was a bachelor until he was 49 and was in his first term when he married the then 21-year-old Francis. Before Francis, back when he was running for president, rumors circulated that he had an illegitimate yep. child named Oscar with a woman named Maria Halpin. In fact, Cleveland's opponents even chanted, Ma, Ma, where's my pa? to attack his character. Cleveland acknowledged that Oscar was possibly his 
is, but Maria also alleged that Cleveland had sexually assaulted her, yeah, though he was true. never charged, and she may have made this up. Regardless, Cleveland made payments to Maria after Oscar was born, and the public mostly believed Cleveland over Maria. With Francis, Cleveland had five children, Ruth, Esther, Marion, Richard, and Francis. All of them lived long lives except Ruth, nicknamed Baby, Baby Ruth, Ruth, who died when she was 12. The makers of the candy bar, Baby Ruth, used to claim they had named it after her, but we now know they really were probably just capitalizing on the star power of Babe Ruth and were just saying they named it after Ruth Cleveland so they didn't have to pay Babe Ruth royalties. 100% true. Uh, all of that is 100% true. That's exactly how all that went down. The candy bar didn't come out when Ruth Cleveland was born and young. In fact, she was dead by that point. Uh, the candy bar came out when Babe Ruth was popular. Esther Cleveland was the first and only child of a president to be born in the White House. Mm. Benjamin Harrison. Yep, I mentioned him earlier. The grandson of William Henry Harrison and son of John Scott Harrison. Had three children with his wife Caroline and one child with his second wife Mary, who was Caroline's niece, by the way. And I believe Caroline died while Harrison was president. Um, so one more layer to the tragedy there for him to have lost his wife, the first lady dying in office, basically. What the heck, Harrison? That is weird. With Caroline, Harrison had Russell, Mary, and an unnamed daughter who died in infancy. Harrison's daughter Mary was acting first lady after Caroline died. After Harrison married Mary, they were so horrified and upset with their father marrying their cousin that they did not attend the wedding and never spoke to him again. With Mary, Harrison mm. had one more child, Elizabeth. William McKinley. McKinley and his wife Ida had two children, both tragically died very yep. young. Ida McKinley II died when she was a baby, and just two years later, Katie died when she was three. And Ida McKinley, the first lady, was always in very poor health, very delicate uh, health situation there. And um, I don't know if that had anything to do with the fact they didn't have more children, but their daughters are both buried with them in Canton, Ohio. Uh, and so McKinley's just one of a number of presidents who has no living descendants today. Ida was never able to have children again due to various health problems. Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt's first wife, Alice, died two days after giving birth to their daughter, also named Alice. Roosevelt was a mess after her death, giving his daughter to his sister to take care of her until she was three. By that time, Roosevelt... But you gotta remember, he wasn't just a mess because his wife died, but his mother died in the same house the same day. Uh, just unbelievably tragic. And he wrote in his diary that day, and you can see it, he put a big red X, and, or big X, I don't know what color it was, and said, I uh, wrote in there, the light has gone out of my life. Uh, horrible. Roosevelt had married Edith, his second wife, and he never talked to Alice about her biological mother. Alice later became one of the most famous children in the White House in American history. The press followed her around, and mm. she was always making headlines by doing controversial stuff. Anyway, with Edith, Roosevelt had five more kids. Theodore Roosevelt Jr., or Ted, Kermit, Ethel, Archie, and Quentin. So here's the thing about, um, Theodore let's go back Roosevelt to this for a Jr., second. Or Ted, Kermit, I'll Ethel, pause it on Archie. And so, um, technically the president was Theodore Roosevelt Jr., uh, but he never really went by that. And so then his son was really Theodore Roosevelt III, but went by Jr. And his son uh, is going to receive the Medal of Honor for D-Day. He's the highest ranking officer to land on the beaches at Normandy on D-Day uh, and is instrumental in helping get things, getting things moving. Is given, he was an assistant division commander at the time and he's given command of his own division after that but dies of a heart attack just a couple of weeks later. Uh, all five of these children actually served in Europe during the First World War in the military. Uh, and Quentin, of course, being the most famous of the bunch, he's shot down in the summer of 1918 as a fighter pilot. 
Quentin. Theodore Roosevelt Jr. served as a member of the New York State Assembly and later as Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Navy, Governor of like Puerto Rico, and Governor General of the Philippines. Quentin died in World War I. He remains the only child of a U.S. President to die in combat. William Howard Taft. Taft and his wife Helen had three children, Robert, Helen, and Charles. All three kind of kicked butt. Charles became the mayor of Cincinnati, Helen was a history professor, and Robert, well, Robert, ended up being one of the most influential U.S. senators yep. in American history. And Robert's grandson, also named Robert, became governor of Ohio. Not a particularly popular, popular one. <clears throat> Here we go. Woodrow Wilson. Wilson and his wife Ellen had three daughters, Margaret, Jesse, and Eleanor. Eleanor, who was married to William Gibbs McAdoo, the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury in her dad's administration, also wrote a biography about her dad. After Ellen died, Wilson married Edith, but the two had... A.K.A. the second President Wilson. ...no children together. Warren Harding. Harding and his wife Florence had no children together, although Florence did have a son named Marshall from a previous marriage. Many argued Harding was sterile, but that was before we knew that he likely had a daughter named Elizabeth. I think it's more than likely. I think they've now confirmed that with DNA. From an affair with Nan Britton. DNA evidence confirmed it in 2015. Calvin Coolidge. Calvin and his wife Grace had two sons, John and Calvin Coolidge Jr. And which is kind of interesting because Calvin Coolidge's real name was John Calvin Coolidge. So. On June 30th, 1924, when Coolidge was president, his sons were playing tennis on mm. the White House tennis courts. Coolidge Jr., who was 16 at the time, played barefoot and got a blister on one of his toes. The blister turned into sepsis afterward, and tragically, Jr. died from blood poisoning just over a week later. Yeah, there's so many times throughout history, presidents included, where just being able to have the right antibiotics could have saved people's lives. We underestimate what an important discovery penicillin was and then the, the other antibiotics that have come since then. Herbert Hoover. Hoover and his wife Lou also had two sons, Herbert Hoover Jr. and Alan. Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt and his wife Eleanor had six children. Anna, Jimmy, Franklin Roosevelt Jr., Elliot, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Jr. II, and John. First of all, Franklin Roosevelt Jr. died as an infant. All the other children lived long lives with life. And that was, a, again, a really common thing that people did, right? If you had a child that had a, a name of some family significance, uh, and that child died young, you would very often name your next child the same thing. Alexander Hamilton is a perfect example of this. His son Philip is 19 when he dies in a duel with George Eaker. His uh, mother, who I believe was pregnant at the time that um, that happened or soon after, has another son and they name him Philip because that was her father's name, Philip Schuyler. Lots of accomplishments. Here's a weird thing I noticed. All five got divorced a lot. Both Elliot and FDR Jeez. Jr. II got married five times. Anyway, Anna went on to become a well-respected author and newspaper yeah. editor. All four boys served bravely in World War II. People forget that. When Franklin Roosevelt was president of the United States, his sons were in uniform and some of them in harm's way. All four boys except John also got into politics. Elliot was a mayor of Miami Beach, Florida. Both Jimmy and FDR Jr. II were U.S. representatives, among other things. Harry Truman. Truman and his wife Bess had just one daughter, Margaret, who was pretty famous due to quite a career in entertainment, mm -hmm. Dwight Eisenhower. Yeah, and at one point, if I remember right, I think Harry wrote a really scathing letter to someone who had given a, a negative review of one of Margaret's performances. 
Eisenhower and his wife Mamie had two sons, Dow Dwight, who died of scarlet fever when he was three, and John, who also had a distinguished military career. And John graduated from D, uh, from West Point on D-Day, became a Brigadier General himself, and it was John's daughter, Susan, that I had the privilege of interviewing a couple of weeks ago. He was also a military historian and U.S. ambassador to Belgium in the Richard Nixon administration. John F. Kennedy. Kennedy and his wife Jacqueline had four children. Two died at or right after birth. An unnamed daughter and Patrick, who died when Kennedy was actually president. There was also Caroline, who is still alive today and served as the U.S. ambassador to Japan in the Barack Obama administration. And John F. Kennedy Jr. I think she's a... I need to look this up, but I think she's an ambassador now for Biden. Yeah, she's the current U.S. ambassador to Australia, so good for her. Junior, who probably could have become president if he really wanted to, although he died at the young age of 38 in a plane crash. I remember when that happened. That was, oh, that would have been, what, like 99? Um, oh, such a tragic, that whole family. Um, if... If ever there was a family that had some kind of legit curse on them, it's the Kennedys. Uh, my goodness. Lyndon Johnson. Johnson and his wife Lady Bird had two daughters, Linda Bird and Lucy. Both are still alive. Mm -hmm. Linda Bird is actually the oldest living child of a U.S. president. Johnson also had an alleged son, Stephen, with Madeline Duncan mm -hmm. Brown. After Johnson died, Madeline claimed she had an affair with him while he was married for nearly 20 years. Richard Nixon. Nixon and his wife Pat also had two daughters, both still alive, Patricia and Julie. Julie married Dwight Eisenhower's grandson, David, yep. who was one of John Eisenhower's sons. So yeah, when I interviewed Susan, I Susan Eisenhower, she's not only the granddaughter of a president, she's also the, uh, the aunt of Richard Nixon's grandkids. Gerald Ford. Ford and his wife Betty had four children, Michael, John, Stephen, and Susan, all still alive. Yep. John apparently helped start the magazine outside. Stephen had a career as an actor, appearing in many big movies and TV shows. Susan has had a distinguished career as an author and served as chairwoman mm. of the Betty Ford Clinic, the organization named after her mom that her mom co-founded, aimed at helping folks struggling with substance abuse. Yeah, Betty Ford very famously struggled with alcohol. And uh, I, I would definitely recommend you check out, there's a, a TV miniseries that came out about the First Ladies. It focuses specifically on Eleanor, um, Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, Michelle Obama, and Betty Ford. And I thought it was really well done. It was pretty interesting insight. Jimmy Carter. Carter and his wife Rosalind, who are both still alive, also have four children. Jack, Jimmy... And I say this all the time, but the world is a better place with Jimmy Carter in it. Phenomenal human being. Carter the third, nicknamed Chip, Donnell, nicknamed Jeff, and Amy. Jack ran for the U.S. Senate in Nevada in 2006, but lost. Most of the Carter kids have kept a low profile in recent years. Ronald Reagan. Reagan had three children with his first wife, Jane Wyman. Only one, Michael, is still alive. They actually adopted him, and he yep. had a long career as a political commentator. And their daughter died from cancer, and I actually was behind Michael Reagan on a flight into Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania once, and had a nice conversation with him. Super nice guy, really enjoyed it. Reagan and Jane also had Maureen, who died in 2001, and Christine, who died at birth. Reagan had two more children with his second wife, Nancy, Patty, and Ronald Prescott, both still alive. Both Patty and Ronald are known for having different political views than their dad. Yep. Patty has been vocal criticizing Donald Trump, and Ron, well heck, he's a left-leaning political commentator for MSNBC for crying out loud. So yeah, so Ron Reagan is a great example of how far sometimes the apple can fall from the tree, right? Ronald Reagan, kind of the, the hero of conservatives, right? Uh, a deeply uh, religious uh, Christian man. His son, Ron, is a very outspoken atheist and very left-wing in his politics. George H.W. Bush. 
Bush Sr. had six children with his wife Barbara. Oh, uh, here's one you may recognize. That's George Walker Bush, who later on served as president himself for a couple terms after serving as the governor of Texas. And here's everybody's favorite Jeb, Jeb Bush, who was the governor of Florida, but didn't get the Republican nomination running for president in 2016. Bush Sr. and Barbara also had Robin, who tragically died from leukemia, leukemia when she was three, and Neil, Marvin, and Doro, who are all still alive and kicking it. Doro is an author who wrote a biography slash memoir about her dad. Bill Clinton. Clinton and his wife Hillary have one daughter, Chelsea, who is also an author and involved with several different humanitarian organizations. George W. Bush. Bush and his wife, Laura, have two daughters, Barbara twins. and Jenna. Hey, they're my age. They're fraternal twins, the only twins of a president. Like and they're named after their grandmothers. Like Chelsea Clinton, Barbara has been an activist for various causes and organizations, and Jenna got into journalism. She currently hosts a show on NBC called Today with Hoda and Jenna. Barack Obama. Obama and his wife Michelle also have two daughters, Malia and Sasha. Malia recently graduated- Isn't it crazy that our most recent, well before Trump, uh, but the previous most recent three presidents all only had just either one or two daughters from college and has a big social media following. Sasha, who is currently attending college, recently went viral on TikTok. Donald hmm. Trump. Trump has five kids. He had three with his first wife, Ivana, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka, who was also my age. How about that? And Eric. There's also Tiffany. Her mom is Marla Maples, Trump's second wife. And finally, there's Baron. His mom is ridiculously Melania, tall. Trump's third and current wife. Baron has lived in the White House the past four years. Donald Jr., Ivanka, and Eric have all been very active with their father's businesses and political campaigns. Ivanka has also been Trump's senior advisor. Coincidentally, my daughters are also my advisors. So that brings us up to the 46th president, or soon to be 46th president, Joe Biden, who has two surviving children. Yeah. Hunter Biden, who is a controversial figure due to his past struggles with drugs, but more recently, his alleged shady business dealings. But we also have Ashley Biden, oh, who, don't hear much how about, about her. that, is also my age. I'm really biased towards people my own age. Hey, don't forget. So, awesome stuff. Boy, a lot of work went into that by Matt Beat, who always does a tremendous job in presenting this stuff. So, yeah, definitely check out his channel. Please watch a bunch of his videos. Uh, and if you want to learn more about those first 10, 12 presidents or so, I think I have four episodes on the podcast now about the tragic lives of the presidents and their families, where I kind of take a deep dive into some of those things. So check that out on any of your favorite podcast platforms. Just look for the Vlogging Through History podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.